In the last video, we saw that Theo found the goblin Scaram, who scammed him, trying to trick another unsuspecting new merchant. So he confronted him and said that all the things he sold were trash, and he explained that none of them had any magic and worked on basic principles and batteries. After trying to save his face for some time, the goblin ran away, and Theo told the newbie merchant to be careful as he went back on his way quite satisfied with his actions. But the person pretending to be the newbie merchant was actually a clever fox named Zaraf, who was an inspector in the security branch of the Wandering Merchant Association. There were complaints about Scaram scamming new merchants, and after months of hard work and planning, she was about to arrest him as soon as he sold a fake good to her. But Theo broke through the security circle without anyone noticing, and spoiled her plan, and she decides to teach her subordinates a harsh lesson but she is also curious about the wandering cat merchant and decides to investigate him further. In his cave, Sejin teaches the rabbits the trick of cutting potatoes into four parts so that they can sow 400 plants out of just 100 tomatoes. And after that is done, it is time to harvest the sweet potatoes. First, Sejin asks the rabbits to harvest the leaves and bring the sprouts to him, and they initially think that he will work hard to plant all the sprouts again. But he says that he is not going to mess up the timing just because of some XP, and the rabbits do not like that they will have to work hard. After that is done, the rabbits dance for a bountiful harvest of the sweet potatoes, and the first crop that Sejin digs up is a great surprise. It is a golden sweet potato that shines the moment it comes out of the soil, and its information window tells Sejin that it was the sweet potato pumpkin of the sun, a new mutated variety that he had grown, and it was his achievement. Sejin and the rabbits can only stare with awe at the new variety he just discovered, and he looks at a list of messages from the system about his achievement. While the job XP and harvest skill proficiency increase only by the previous amount, the real benefit is the exclusive right to cultivate the new variety. No one in the tower could cultivate the sweet potato pumpkin of the sun without his permission, and Sejin is amazed. He realizes that only he can grow and have this sweet potato, even if he harvests it in bulk and gives it to anyone else, they cannot grow it without his permission, and he can earn profits from it forever. So he does not waste any time and plants the new variety back in the soil again. Sejin admits that he really wanted to see what it tasted like, but at this point, the best decision was to plant it and harvest it later. After he is done with that, Sejin exclaims that it is time to harvest some regular sweet potatoes, and the rabbits are as excited as he is. Everyone works together, and they get a good yield of sweet potatoes, which they include in their dinner for the night alongside fish. After the sweet potatoes covered in onion leaves are roasted enough, Sejin pokes them with a pointed stick to see if they are cooked to the center. And then he and the rabbits blew air on the sweet potato, hoping to cool it quickly. As Sejin breaks it, he says that it was something to die for, and the rabbits are already drooling. Everyone gets their share, and they enjoy it, but the husband rabbit is too impatient and almost chokes on it, while his wife comforts him. Then Sejin gets a message from the tower manager, who was waiting for his turn while wiping saliva off his mouth. Sejin thanks the manager for letting the rabbits eat first and then gifts ten sweet potatoes to them. The manager is grateful and says that he will thoroughly enjoy himself. After that, Sejin asks the sickle rabbit if she is done eating and could she help him, and she gets ready to work. Inside his office, the tower manager is enjoying the sweet potatoes one at a time because they are smaller than his bite size, but he has eaten all of them and now craves more. As the tower manager tries to ask for more sweet potatoes, he sees Sejin doing something strange through the crystal ball. With the help of a sickle rabbit, he had made long French fries like slices of the sweet potatoes and was drying them over onion leaves. He says that after drying them completely on one side, they should turn them over to the other side, and he asks the sickle rabbit to cut one more sweet potato. She does that quickly and effortlessly, and Sejun praises her for the even sizes of the pieces, and she is quite proud. The tower manager sends him a message, saying that he is very furious that Sejun is throwing away delicious sweet potatoes. But he calmly replies that he was not throwing them away but drying them to make something even more delicious later. The manager is curious and asks him what he is making, and Sejun asks him in return if he has ever heard about the dried sweet potato. In the outside world, Kim Dongshik has reached Sejun's home to fulfill their contract, and as he rings the bell, someone shouts, asking who he is. Dongshik asks if it was Park Sejun's address, and his younger brother Sedol opens the door in a hurry, eager for any news about his elder brother. His parents are quite shocked, but then they are even more confused when they see a man they do not know. They ask Dongshik who he is and then let him in the house, offering him fruits to show hospitality. He says that they do not need to serve him anything 
and Sejin's parents ask him why he was looking for their son. They say that Sejin has been missing for some time and that they have had no contact with him. Dongshik realizes that he never introduced himself and says that he is the leader of the Phoenix Guild's fifth team as he gives them his card. Sejin's father is a bit shocked, but his younger brother is flabbergasted as he realizes that their guest was from the world-famous Phoenix Guild. Even as his parents ask him what was wrong, Sedol can only focus on his card, and he trembles as he finds that it was real. He says that the Phoenix Guild was one of the top guilds in Korea, and the leader of the fifth team was a marvelous top-tier hunter. Dongshik enjoys a fan complimenting him but acts modest, saying it is not a big deal. Sejin's parents' attitude changes quickly, and they decide to present the best thing they have in their house to their esteemed guest, and he insists that they just sit comfortably. Then the parents ask Dongshik if he was a hunter and was here for their son, was Sejin also in the tower? They are confused about when he entered the tower and why a top-tier hunter was here instead of him. Dongshik replies that he was here to deliver something to them at Sejin's request and takes out an envelope from his coat pocket. He places the envelope on the table, and Sejin's family is horrified. They think that it was a will and their son was dead, and they start crying and wailing, and Dongshik panics as he tells them that it was not a will, and their son was alive and well. The family calms down a little on hearing this, and they open the envelope to find a check inside. It takes them a lot of time trying to comprehend the zeros before they realize it is worth 50 million won. They are stunned, and Dongshik adds that Sejin gave him the message to apologize to his parents for going to the tower so suddenly, and he was well, and he wanted this money to be delivered to his parents. Sejin's father exclaims in joy, saying that his son was smart just like him and that he always knew he would make it big wherever he went. His mother asks Dongshik if Sejin was really doing well, and why he did not come here himself to give this money to them. Dongshik replies that Sejin probably could not exit the tower because of the quests, but it was a very common thing that happened with all hunters, and he urges her not to worry. Then he turns to Sedol and asks him what he meant by Sejin being missing and if they really had no idea that he entered the tower. Sedol replies that his brother suddenly went missing about five months ago, and they have had no contact with him since then. They received no news from any channel, and just in case, they even contacted the Awakened Association to ask them if someone named Park Sejun was registered there, but there was no one. Sedol asks Dongshik if people use fake names in the tower, and he replies that there are some people who do that, but he promises to inquire more about Sejun from the association through his guild later. As Sejun's family gets busy with themselves, Dongshik wonders if someone could really climb up to the 40th floor of the tower in just five months, and that too with solo play. The towers had been present on Earth for 10 years, and there was no hunter who could make it that far in such a short period of time. Dongshik wonders if Sejun was a genius hunter who was unprecedented in history. Then Sedol asks the hunter if they have a talent development program in their guild, and his father smacks him, saying that while his brother was working so hard in the tower, he was just fooling around and not helping him even a little. Dongshik says that being a hunter is an extremely dangerous job where one can lose his life. The Awakened Association also does not recommend registering more than one hunter per household in case there are any casualties. After completing his task, Dongshik gets up, saying that he should take his leave now, and Sejun's parents try to stop him for some more time. They say that they have not served him anything yet and ask him to at least have a meal with them. Dongshik politely refuses their offer, saying that he came here to complete Sejun's request just as he left his tower, and had not even gone home yet, where his family was waiting for him. With that, he wishes Sejin's family goodbye and gets into his car, where he gets a message from the tower that he has completed the contract quest. Dongshik is glad and then decides that he should go home now. As he is driving back, he gets a call from his daughter, whom he really loves. He acts like a baby as he talks to her and asks her if she missed him. He asks her to guess what he brought and then answers himself, saying that he brought the thing she wanted the most. And meanwhile, in the tower, Theo is walking back to Sejin's cave while eating something he bought in the market and he complains that the 99th floor is too far away. With this, the chapter ends. First, we got to learn about the exclusive rights of the new species and saw Sejun do the right thing by planting it rather than eating it. And then Dongshik fulfilled his promise like a gentleman. We will have to wait to see what Sejun plans to do with the dried sweet potatoes and if anything else gets ready to harvest anytime soon. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and tell us in the comments. Also, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.